The name of my topic is Accessibility of Magenta, the look into the future. And my name is Igor Minailo. So today we will be particularly uh, talking about how the, like looking the, uh, looking the answer uh, for the question, how the accessibility should look like to make merchants easily upgrade to the newest version of the platform. So you see, like I, I, I got like, all we will be talking about is the upgradability and the how to be on the newest version of the platform. And that exactly was the reason of the delay. So that how to avoid uh, avoid uh, the problems with the delays and all other problems. So you see that when you are not using the, the latest version of the software, you, you might end up having some unexpected problems. Uh, so, as I already told you, my name is Igor Minella. I'm uh, Chief Magenta Architect. I work for Adobe. And uh, by the way, uh, this picture was made uh, probably a year ago, maybe two years ago, during, during the previous MageConf. And uh, that time I had a habit uh, wearing shorts, while now, well now I'm spending most of the time in my pyjama. Uh, so the new normal and how it impacts uh, all our life. So, uh, yeah, today uh, we will, so probably you already know guys that uh, you might be a little bit awkward that uh, you might know that Magenta is probably, if, uh, if not the most, but definitely one of the most extensible e-commerce platform all over the world, so I, I'm not afraid to say that. So we are we are very extensible. So if and we feel already a leader uh, regarding the extensibility. Why are we looking for the new approaches? Why are we trying to uh, introduce a new paradigm uh, of uh, the extensibility? Why uh, why are we trying to reconsider what we already have? If we already the leader and we feel already the the absolute champion of the extensibility. And the, the answer is actually on the slide, the total cost of ownership, which is, which is or TC, or just TCO, so which is typically a, a financial term, uh, but uh, this, uh, this metric section for, uh, for uh, it, it might uh, just represent how the, the product, uh, like all the scope of different uh, expenses, like operational lo long-term expenses and the like upgradability expenses, uh, the expenses for uh, keeping the light, uh, light on, like uh, running test, uh, product maintenance and so on and so forth. So uh, with, with, growing, uh, with growing Magenta, with growing platform, we uh, we see that the total cost of ownership for Magento for for merchant and from one side and for the, from Magento to another side is actually constantly growing. And uh, we we started and uh, a part of this uh, part of this issue uh, part of part of this growing uh, cost of ownership is that is the upgradability issue because as you know guys uh, merchants are not not actually getting uh, getting uh, upgrade getting the latest upgrade of the system immediately and try they actually spend some time uh, waiting they they are spending some time uh, being uh, preparing and so on and so forth uh, so forth and there are actually reasons why they are doing this and we also talk through uh, those reasons as well. So uh, this is Magento 2.3 and 2.4, uh, and uh, this is a monolithic application. I already showed this slide uh, several times in the scope of different presentation. The, the important part here that Magento introduce, introduces quite a lot of different APIs, uh, and uh, those APIs are used for uh, for web API uh, entry point, those API used for in-process uh, communication between different methods, and so on and so forth. So we actually provide a lot of different uh, APIs, which we consider as a kind of public code of Magenta, which we really encourage for you, as a, a third-party developers, to uh, to rely on to uh, to track, and for those APIs we provide the. Uh, we provide the forward compatibility 
obligations. And uh, you might uh, you might see on this slide the list of all those APIs. It's actually it's not the full list. It's probably just a part of this list because because we we have a wide uh, variety of the, those APIs. So those PHP classes, PHP interfaces, JavaScript classes, a lot of different configuration, UI components, and so on and so forth. So and uh, those are kind of valid ways to. Uh, to, uh, to 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 run Magento through those uh, entry points, or uh, to customize Magento through those uh, those points, and so on and so forth. And uh, uh, along with those APIs, let's consider the existing integration uh, diagram and uh, how the uh, date of like how, how, what what currently the three different possibility. Of uh, of other systems to be integrated with Magento, so of course there are uh, two pretty typical uh, typical approaches which rely on the in-process customization and which require the custom pluginization, so the interceptor mechanism which we have in Magento, to and uh, where we we make the in-process customization where we Magento provide the possibility to intercept the in process call of, of some uh, method invocation and uh, for uh, synchronous in, uh, for synchronous integration uh, the third party developer who would like to to make the integration of magento with the third party back office system uh, he will he will just end up having the direct call to the system for the asynchronous communication correspondingly uh, that developer will probably just put the message into the uh, into the RabbitMQ, and there will be some listener who will handle uh, this me message as soon as it will ar arrive. Will make some data transformation, and then will deliver the final uh, final data set into the third party backend system. While the last one, and probably the most interesting for us right now. Is the integration uh, based on the fully headless manner, uh, where we have the REST APIs uh, and the bulk, like we have also bulk uh, asynchronous REST APIs for uh, uh, state change and put and for APIs. Uh, uh, and uh, in in this case, uh, uh, third-party developer end up ha uh, having some integration here. Where there is kind of an, an application, like which which is called here an API polar, and this API polar just periodically uh, retrieves the data from Magenta. Magenta web API uh, web APIs provide the possibility for filtering, provide the possibility to to specify filters like uh, created at or modify at or, or something. So that uh, in this application, uh, a third-party developer might always get the latest delta of uh, updated uh, updated entries from Magenta and retrieve them to the spooler, make some data transformation later on, and uh, deliver to the third-party system. So the main important part here is that the last uh, the last pattern is the most robust one. The most sustainable one from the because actually it does not rely on on internal magenta, internal magenta structure, internal magenta APIs, and there is no any possibility that uh, uh, the some private code will be involved into uh, into this extensibility or integration strategy. So, uh, and uh, as you know, guys, we are not uh, so often. Uh, uh, we are not breaking our uh, our web API so often. That's why uh, all of our web APIs are still on the version one, because we we actually never try to change it since the very beginning of our release. And uh, getting back to uh, uh, to all the in process uh, extensibility which we have now, right? Uh, which I mentioned on the previous slide. The issue is that uh, Magenta Magenta like the like the big part of the magenta business model is to be uh, to be on prem solution so that to be a box product so that you might just just download magenta and you might deploy it on your server which is totally under your control so that and they especially taking into account that this is a php 
uh, application we don't like we cannot guarantee we we cannot prevent that you will be relying on those entities which are not marked as an API, right? So we and that that's why we I keep saying that we don't know how you guys are using us, how you guys are using Magento. That's why I, actually that like we uh, now we have cloud, now we have marketplace, and we we use some like a lot of different static tools just to analyze particular dependency dependencies from those third party uh, business logic to Magenta and check whether we like uh, what, what particular parts of the Magenta need to be exposed uh, better, where we need to refine our APIs and, and so on and so forth. But generally speaking, we we cannot, uh, we don't have any guarantee that you, you would not be relying on the private implementation. That's why uh, to have uh, to have headless implementation, to have headless connection, uh, the most beneficial because they are the most robust. And uh, if you look at the system on a more uh, like more broadly here, you will see that we we end up having a lot of different integration between between different components, between different back office systems with Magenta. And uh, ideally, and actually it's pretty typical for, uh, uh, even for SMB merchants, even for mid-size uh, e-commerce uh, projects, it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty typical to, to have uh, external integrations. And uh, that's actually, and also for merchants, it's pretty typical to have, so Magenta is not, uh, is not the, the system by its own. Magenta is, uh, is also an ecosystem, and this ecosystem consists of uh, a million different uh, extensions, uh, a million different customizations, so that even if one of those extensions will be, will be fragile enough, and uh, if uh, one of those extensions will, um, will be using some private, uh, private code dependency, and uh, it, it would not be uh, good to go for the upgrade to, to the next Magento version. It will introduce the, the whole problem uh, for merchant to upgrade to the latest, uh, uh, latest version of the platform. That's why by particular merchants, the, the chances that uh, potentially uh, he might end up having some problems during the migration actually just just increase and that's why uh, the main concern from the merchant side that it's really hard to predict in advance the cost of the upgrade and this is actually one of the biggest biggest concerns from the merchant side that it's really hard to predict in advance uh, what the cost of the upgrade is going to be and we actually even during this during this conference, we have a, a great presentation regarding the safe upgrade tool and uh, our investments made uh, towards that part. But uh, and uh, uh, before that, we had several presentations regarding the static analysis, and all 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 of this actually make us to to work with the static analysis tool, uh, tools pretty thoroughly and to discover possibility to predict uh, and analyze how the upgrade. Uh, uh, Gonna, gonna go whether it will introduce some problems or not. And uh, moreover, as a, another root cause for us, that we we end up having the big bank releases. And uh, I wanted to demonstrate how the big bank uh, looks like uh, in terms of release. And uh, I did not uh, I did not want to use any dramatic dramatic pictures here, like explosions or whatever. So I just came to the to the release notes of Magento 2.4.1. And I made a screenshot of, uh, so from the left side, you might see only the partner's contributions to, to, the, to the patch release. So this, there are no, uh, no domestic contributions so made, made by the Magenta core team. There are no individual contribu contributions, which are also plenty of uh, being created for 2.4.1. So that you might see that the, there is a huge number of pull requests being accepted. So, what, what it what it means uh, in the scope of this presentation? It means that we need to and we need to have a lot of uh, supplementary activities like regression testing, like uh, manual testing, like uh, preparation, like packaging, deployment, and so on and so forth. And this uh, this takes a vast majority of our time. 
And of course, ideally for us, so the, the, the desirable goal, uh, goal for the ultimate goal for us will be uh, to have all the merchants to be on the latest versions of the Magento of Magento, so that we no need to support all the previous versions, we no need to uh, to su support different uh, different outdated versions, and uh, but uh, we, with the current extensibility model, it's it's not just possible. So uh, with the with the great power comes great responsibility, and with the great power of uh, almost unlimited extensibility of Magento, too. We we have uh, we have a drawbacks and those drawbacks actually uh, the root cause of those drawbacks is actually the, this unlimited extensibility because we don't know how exactly people uh, extend Magenta how exactly people use Magenta and those uh, sometimes those uh, let's say not recommended ways uh, of uh, usages and expansion of Magenta may lead to problems for the upgrade process. We uh, so on the right part of the slide you might see the release notes of the uh, of inventory project, and we try to address the problem with uh, big bank releases. Uh, we we try to to make the separate uh, separate packages uh, and the uh, the inventory also called MSI uh, project. Uh, we was a pioneer uh, uh, in in this case uh, the, the the totally separate project. Uh, in a totally separate GitHub repository with own set of APIs, which uh, integrated with Magenta pretty uh, pretty flawlessly. Uh, I mean, uh, from the dependency perspective. And the, the main idea was to release a package of uh, of um, inventory separately out of the monolith, and to see whether it will be uh, whether this solution will be sustainable. And we this is the way how it how we try to attack big big bank releases we have right now but uh, and actually we even did several several such releases we introduced uh, similar references to, to the composer so we started to use caret and tilt uh, referring to uh, to inventory uh, packages while the problem the root cause of the problem was that still we don't know how you go so that compatible from our standpoint changes to 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 MSI packages we got complaints that uh, those changes were breaking for particular merchants that's why uh, that's why we end up having like main version of Magenta and different version of of inventory so that our support team had to support kind of different permutation of like uh, of Magento version, different uh, different inventory version, so that we realize that this approach is not sustainable because if we will have uh, other uh, bundle extensions, for example, like Page Builder, we will end up having just a huge matrix of different permutations. Like all the all the numbers uh, of uh, of MSI will be multiplied by all the numbers of uh, of uh, Page Builder, and then will be multiplied by the number by uh, numbers of the platform, so it's just huge. And actually, that's why how we end up having uh, uh, coming to the idea of the auto process extensibility, because with auto process extensibility, we might see um, we, we might see that most of those problems are solved pretty easily. Actually, auto process extensibility introduces uh, a different set of the problems which which we. Uh, which we are challenged to solve, but currently, uh, let me share with you some some of the experiments, some of the proof of concept we had internally, and one of those experiments was to introduce uh, four existing REST APIs, and uh, as I already as I already mentioned about the. Uh, it is pretty typical uh, the headless approach when the backend system uh, being integrated with Magenta relying uh, solely on uh, web APIs like REST. So that we just decided to auto generate all the uh, for all the REST contracts the alternative uh, protobuf contracts. Why we decided to use protobuf because protobuf is language agnostic. So that potentially, if we are already talking about auto process extensibility, we might introduce the. Uh, we might introduce the 
a handler of this uh, of, of the of the RPC invocation on on any language. So it's not uh, uh, we we don't have a strong requirements for PHP. And this is actually also a kind of a shift in comparison to what we have with in-process extensibility, because with in-process extensibility, the uh, first level citizen in Magenta ecosystem was the PHP interface, while now we're switching to the language agnostic and the platform neutral uh, APIs. So that you might see that uh, for for this particular interface, for the category management, we, we have this auto-generated service in protobuf, yeah. Uh, regarding the different options, we we also consider it. We also consider it GraphQL uh, as a as a way to communication between different services, uh, and uh, uh, and the uh, uh, JSON or HTTP two. So uh, GraphQL is actually it's not really good. Uh, so it's it's much better for like for uh, for UI communication for the final consumer communication like uh, React application or like typically yeah, typically react application or other pwa applications to retrieve as much data as possible and actually it's it's, it's really good for it while the protobuf and the and the grpc was was pretty cool from the performance this is a binary protocol and it's not that chatty as uh, json that's why we end up having prot uh, protobuf contracts so you may see that this is an auto-generated contract which we end up having for the category management uh, REST Web API. And also, uh, you, you might see here we have the before and after uh, calls. And those before and after calls might be easily, uh, uh, yeah, so we, uh, we have the, those subscription mechanism and we end up having the RPC proxy the RPC proxy is the application based on the uh, Istio, which uses Envoy underneath, and the Envoy is a proxy, and the Istio is a, is a, actually uh, the mm, industry standard for uh, for uh, service mesh solutions, and the and the in, in, uh, Envoy is a is a proxy created by by Lyft for uh, cloud native. So what there we we have the RPC proxy Bigger. which has a subscription so that can you, can you hear me uh, sorry for yeah. bargaining just wanted to remind you that we are already more than 28 minutes in so basically uh, it would be great if, if you could finish in within like 5 minutes so we can get a Q&A session okay. awesome okay. thank you okay okay i'll do my best uh, I can never promise, but I'll do my best. Uh, uh, so yeah, uh, and uh, we uh, so uh, through this RPC proxy, we, we make the subscription, and those subscription are passed to Magenta application, and then Magenta application just uh, we have a pluginization of the REST framework, which uh, check the incoming uh, web API calls and check whether there are any available subscription and as soon as those subscription uh, exist, we, and here you might see the process step by step, and uh, as soon as this subscription exists, we just, uh, uh, based on the, uh, based on the DTO, uh, PHP DTOs we, we have, we build the protobuf contract and uh, uh, make the gRPC call. And the uh, RPC proxy, uh, uh, based on Envoy, actually terminates the gRPC call and uh, make make the check where uh, there are any out of the bo like out of process customizations. And the, as as you saw it on previous slide, uh, the typical example for uh, synchronous customiz uh, for synchronous extensibility might be headless functions like Adobe IO Runtime or AWS Lambda, for example, or for asynchronous uh, uh, integration, uh, we might just drop a message into Adobe Pipeline, uh, for example, and then this message will be digested and handled by, uh, by a particular handler. So uh, to, uh, to, to make uh, this idea not only the idea which exists in the framework, we decided to make a service which will 
uh, make an integration with the shipment system. And uh, we, we, we decided to choose FedEx. As you know now, uh, we uh, in Magenta, merchants are manually to provide tracking number and create shipment labels. So that we introduce this service which uh, connects to, to FedEx and retrieve this uh, uh, tracking number. And uh, this is done through the uh, Adobe Your On Time headless, headless function so that potentially here we might uh, end up having like many different adapters. And for each of those, uh, each of those uh, shipping providers like FedEx, DHL, we will end up having independent headless function. So uh, it, it, it looks pretty cool. And uh, moreover, as I already mentioned before, this is the most robust uh, integration scenario because it, it solely relies on, on Magenta service contracts, right? Uh, so that uh, the chance that you will be impacted with uh, next Magenta release are very, very low. And uh, you, for, for this kind of uh, integration, you, you, we, we, we did not open source yet our uh, RPC proxy and we, we are working towards this part so that I believe it, it will appear pretty soon uh, available. But uh, you know, actually there is no rocket science here. So it's, uh, it's pretty typical for cloud native application and you might, uh, as I already mentioned, you might use either Istio based solution or, and Envoy and uh, build one in a matter of like, in a matter of hours or maybe in a matter of days. But yeah, let's get back to Monolith. Uh, as you know, along with, uh, along with Storefront track, we are also decoupling our Monolith. And uh, mm, yeah, and there is, I will skip this slide. So uh, it's pretty typical for decoupling Monolith is to introduce a facade and make all this, uh, uh, all this uh, decoupling, uh, decoupling stuff behind this facade to not, not to, to, to prevent uh, direct impact for uh, uh, for those who depend on the uh, on the monolith. In our case, the facade for monolith is a GraphQL server. That's why we are spending so much time for uh, investing into the GraphQL. That's why we are making the decoupling of the monolith right behind the uh, GraphQL. And you might see on this slide that uh, in our case, the Strangler pattern looks like uh, a set of services uh, like catalog, prices, and search. So those services which we are doing right now and which we're going to release first of all. And, uh, uh, and the standalone GraphQL server actually makes the proxy into those services. I will be skipping, uh, I will be skipping uh, many, many of those time, but you, you might also see that JRPC and the platform agnostic uh, calls are typical to storefront uh, communication as well. And uh, at the end, we probably will end up having a similar uh, ecosystem where we, uh, where we will provide a third party uh, developer a possibility to, eith uh, to either customize uh, Magenta back office system uh, through uh, out of the process extensibility uh, introduce uh, we, which will be guaranteed we, which will be provided through the uh, gRPC pro, uh, through the RPC proxy and the and the subscriptions uh, the same as for uh, the same as for storefront application and the last but not least third uh, option will be uh, will be customization on the level of GraphQL server where uh, where uh, we will provide the possibility to change the routing path so that uh, uh, so that third party developer might, might just substitute the uh, the default route to to some custom route and uh, yeah I, I will just uh, get back to the slide and you you might uh, you might uh, start probably this, this is all taken into account the initial delay and the, all the time slot. And you might ask the question while the slide will be on, on your, on your screen, uh, on your desktop, like on your screen so that you might, you might get awareness of what we are working towards and what our the desirable state gonna be in several years. <laughs> 